Hey everyone, in today's video I'm going to talk you through color spaces, what's the difference between Adobe RGB and sRGB and which one you should be shooting. Before we jump into the video, please jump over to macgranger.com, over 1600 free videos for you to check out. You can also sign up to our mailing list, get involved on the community forum, and if you like my videos, maybe even buy one of the download series. So first off, what exactly is a color space? I think this is something that actually really confuses people. You just see it as this graphical representation, but it can be confusing exactly what that's telling you. Essentially, your eyes can see way more colors than any device can actually, that we're generally using, can reproduce. So a color profile is a way of mapping out what colors it's going to capture and able to recreate. Now, uh, you know, they're measured as an RGB and you've got three channels there. Each one has 256 different levels. So you've got 256 by 256 by 256 creating the total amount of color you've got in there. Now, then you're creating a lookup table essentially. So if you say, I want to see what 233-122-067 looks like, you can go into that in Photoshop or one of those programs and see that's a, I'm making this up, a mid-tone blue. If you shoot that in a different color profile, it's still gonna be a blue, but it won't match exactly because the limits of that different parameters are slightly different. So the points that each one correlates to is going to be slightly different. Now, getting specifically into these two color profiles that we're talking about today. Uh, sRGB was actually developed back in 1996 by HP and Intel trying to create something for the internet. They looked at what was the commonly able to be displayed or close to be able to be displayed by monitors at that time. So in that sense, it's already 20 years out of date because obviously monitor technology has advanced a lot in that time. But essentially, that's what it was all founded on. So most programs and everything on the web is using sRGB color profile when it's looking up and representing colors. And often you'll see monitors saying they can reproduce a certain percentage of the sRGB gamut. But Adobe RGB, taking a look at it on screen now side by side, you can see is considerably bigger. It's actually about 35% larger. You can see especially up in the top left and bottom left, it's getting a lot more blues and greens in there. Something that we have to clarify though is that whilst it's a lot bigger, it's a misconception that Adobe RGB has more colors than sRGB, it doesn't. They both have 16.7 million, 256 by 256 by 256. That's the maximum number of colors both of them can recreate. It's just that the Adobe RGB is a physically larger space. So that means that the spaces are going to be slightly further apart, but it can capture more different tones in, a, in an overall sense in terms of the ends of its spectrum than sRGB can. So let's talk through some pros and cons. First of all, with Adobe RGB. So it's giving you a wider area of color. That's a, definitely a pro. And when you're going through and making your edits, you can then downsample down to sRGB and know that it's captured colors that are beyond what the sRGB can do. So it is going to be able to downscale in a sense to do that no problem. Downside though is that most of the world outside of Photoshop are using sRGB. So you're most likely going to want to do some editing before you put anything online. But Adobe RGB is great for print. You're going to get more vibrant colors. And you know, if you're getting into print, it gets hugely complicated because you're going to probably end up, if you're doing a press job, going to CMYK colors anyway. Now, looking at sRGB, it has a narrower overall gamut of color, so that's a negative, but it is it matches what most people are going to be looking at. If you're shooting to put things on your website or onto different sites like that, then they're going to be using sRGB, so it's, you know, you're using the exact same profile, so you also have the advantage that if you wanted to shoot and then put it straight online, you, there's no work needed, whereas the Adobe RGB, you really want to convert from Adobe RGB into the sRGB to get the colors looking perfect. Downside to sRGB, obviously it's a smaller triangle of colors that it's capturing. So trying to out, you know, capture it in sRGB, but then output as Adobe RGB, you're going to be limited and the computer's going to be guessing what points it should be using because it wasn't actually captured in the file. So what one should you use? 
Essentially, if you're ever going to print, I recommend using Adobe RGB. And if you are going to do some editing on your shots before you put online, again, use Adobe RGB because you're getting a broader range of colors which you can then go to sRGB. If you're only ever going to use it for online stuff and you may at times want to not edit your shots, then sure, sRGB may do it for you just fine. Whichever profile you're using, think about what your final output is. And of course, you want to edit your shots in a color managed way. So if you're, you know, if you're able to shoot and get a color reference at the time, if you can calibrate your monitor, get a monitor that can show a lot of colors. My ISO captures like 99, almost 100% of the Adobe RGB spectrum then you've got a better chance of it matching once it gets to print or when it's viewed on other calibrated devices. So we'll choose it as sRGB and then just export it as normal and the file will be using that profile when it's referencing all of those different color points within your image. So that's pretty much it. Do jump over to macgranger.com. On the contact page, you can give me suggestions for videos you'd like to see with over 1600 free ones up there. I've covered a lot of topics, but there's always new topics from beginner to advanced that I haven't thought of, so I'd love your suggestions. Whilst you're there, also sign up for the mailing list. So leave me any questions or comments you have, click the like and sub. I'll see you soon.